Hello guys, another nice problem here. And this is a typical problem in civil engineering, at least when you study soil mechanics and geotechnical engineering. It says you have in this part, you have several columns applied there with the loads coming from the upper stories, I don't know. And this is the soil pressure distribution what is happening here. But in this problem, you don't know this value of W2 or this value of W1. At the end, for this to be in equilibrium, what it should happen is that when you do the summation of moments, the summation of moments must be zero. And the summation of forces should be zero. That always has to happen. So in other words, the resultant force has to be zero, and the resultant moment has to be zero. Then let's try to do that. You have distributed loading here, you know what is the drill, and don't get mesmerized by this W1 and W2 here. The first thing is divide these into two loads, and then you're going to have an equivalent load coming from the rectangle. The height of the rectangle is W2, and the base of the rectangle is 2.5 plus 3.5 plus 1 plus 1. This is 6, 7, 8. So basically the value for this force is going to be 8 W2 and the location is going to be from here to here so it's going to be 4 because if the base is 8 it's going to be 4 from this end or 4 from this end whatever you like. Now the triangle is going to be the area of the triangle once again. We already established that the base is 4, 8, I'm sorry, 6, 7, 8. But the height is not W1, of course, it's this one. If this is W1 and this is W2, this portion is W1 minus W2. So the value of that force is going to be 8 times the height divided by 2. So it's going to be 4 times W1 plus W2. Now the location. What is the location of that force? From the right angle, it's going to be one third of the base. So the, the distance, I'm going to use a different color because I barely can see this. From here to here, it's going to be one third of 8 because 8 is the base. Now, once you have that, you can do that the resultant force has to be zero. The force coming from the top minus the force, or the minus the force coming from the top plus the force is coming from the bottom. So you can have negative 60, negative 80, negative 50. Those are these three forces. And now from the bottom, you have this force, which is 4 W1 plus W2. plus this force which is 8W2 and that has to be equal to zero. So from here you can establish a system of equations or you can establish the first equation that you're going to be using. You have 190, negative 190 and then you have plus 4W1 plus 4W2 plus 8W2 equals zero or you can say that 12W2 plus 4W1 equals 190 and you get your first equation. Now the second equation comes from the summation of moments. Now uh, the summation of moment has to be zero no matter where you take it. So depending on where you take it Depending on where you take it, it's going to be your problem shorter or a little bit longer. Now, think smart. Think smart all the time. Look what happened. I can take moment with respect to this point, for example. And I have all the distances and all the forces. And at the end, I'm going to end with a force, with a, with an equation involving W1 and W2 as well and then I can compare it with this equation and solve for it. However, if you realize the only term containing the two unknowns is 
this load here. So I'm going to call that point A, the point where that force is applied. And I'm going to do the summation of forces about A. Once again, you can do the moment uh, about any point. And I'm saying this time just to change counterclockwise is positive. So if you do moment with respect to the point A, let's start with how the equation is going to look like. First, this is going to be 60. And if this force is here, this force is here, and this is the distance is 8 thirds up to this point, the distance will be between this point and this force will be, that is the distance that I'm looking for. The total distance is 8 thirds and this distance is 1. So I can say 60 that multiplies 8 thirds minus 1. And if you apply the force here, it's going to be counterclockwise, which I said for this problem is positive. Now the second force that I find is this 80 here. Now if you put that 80 over there, now I need the distance between this and the 80. The distance that I'm looking for is this one. How can I calculate that force? Well, I know the total distance from here to here is 3.5 and I know the distance from here to here is 8 thirds so I can say 3.5 minus 8 thirds is going to give me that distance over there now the direction if I'm doing moment here and I apply the force it's going to be like that and what is that value that that is clockwise which will be negative based on this assumption here. Now I have this other force, 50. What is the distance from this point to that force? Well let's do the same thing that we did again. I know the total distance from here to here will be 3.5 plus 2.5, 6 plus 1, 7. And I know the distance from here to the point A is 8 thirds. So I can say 7 minus 8 thirds. And it's going to be clockwise, meaning negative in this case. Now I finish in the top. Now let's go to the bottom. And look what is the beauty of selecting the point at that exactly where the force is. So I can cancel that force from the triangle. Now if I do that, this force is pushing it up. So it's going to be positive. But this triangular force is not producing any moment because I am exactly at the point where the triangular force is applied. So this force is 8W2. And the distance between this and that, let's, let's check it out. What is the distance between, the value of the force is 8W2. Now, I know this distance is 8 thirds, and I know this distance from here to here. What is the distance from here to here? The total base is 8, meaning this is 4. You see, 4. 4. 4 minus 8 thirds. And it's going to be positive. And that has to be 0. Now, from here, I can solve for W2 because it's the only unknown that I have in that problem. So I have, let me check again all the values because I don't want to mess it up. So this is. A W2, let's start with this one. A W2 multiplied by the distance 4 minus 8 thirds. Correct. Then I have this force of 50, 50 multiplied by this distance, and this distance will be 7 minus 8 thirds. Perfect. And it's going to be negative. This other force here will be 80 multiply by 3.5 minus a third and it's going to be negative and finally this force here is 60 60 multiplied by a thirds minus one which is going to give you this part and it's going to be positive now this you can solve it by parts you can solve it in any way that you want to let me see how is this 
60 and then you have 8 thirds minus 1, 8 thirds minus 1 times 60 minus 80 that multiplies 3.5 minus 8 thirds minus 50 that multiply 7 minus 8 thirds I'm just using all in the in the calculator um, that's going to be negative 183.3 plus and then I have this part here 4 minus 8 thirds times 8 10 point 6 W2 equals 0 and then I can solve for W2 pass this to the other side 183.3 divided by 10.6 and when I say 183.3 I say 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 as many you can put over there and then you get the value for W2 and the value for W2 will be 17.1875 now what are the units for W2? this is a distributed force if this is a distributed force and this is in kilonewtons and this is in meters then it will be kilonewton per meter and now the problem is solved because I just get this value and plug it into that equation and I can say 12 times this plus 4w1 equals 190 I'm just plugging this value into this which is this and then let me see times 12 something wrong in this equation let me check this equation again I remember I, I don't edit my video so let me see this equation again negative 60 negative 80 negative 50 plus this force here this force here is gonna be four times w1 plus w2 which is the value of this force plus this force here is a w2 so when I solve for this I have four plus W2, 12 W2, 12 W2 plus 4 W1 minus 190 has to be 0. If I pass this to the other side, it's going to be 190. 12 W2, W2 is this value here. So, right, 4 W1 plus W2. 4w1 plus w2 60 140 190 one half this is this w1 plus w2 and here is the error here is the error you see here is the error that I created I put this value here as 4 W1 plus W2, no, it's minus. So this value here is minus W1 plus W2. Yeah, it didn't affect in this part because, but you see, even the professor can make errors, but you know the difference, the professor notices it. So this is gonna be 4 W1 minus 4 W2, right there. And then this equation is gonna be 4w and the only reason I realized that now is because I was getting a negative number here so this would be 4 times that let me see now 190 minus 4 times 17 17.1875 that's going to be 121 divided by 
So W1 will be 30.3125 kilonewton meter. Okay, perfect. Now I'm getting values that make sense. Now, I hope that you catch this at the beginning. I hope so. Because you're insulting me right now. But uh, if you didn't, well, that's a good experience also because now you have to go back and check that that is wrong. This is a nice problem. Practice problems like that if you can, guys. See you later. Keep learning and keep practicing. Have a good day.